anyway, hello, Matrix. Um, hope everybody is well. Um, what I've done um, this week, I realized I made a little bit of a, mis well, not a mistake. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't really matter. Um, we were supposed to do trig today and analytical geometry last time. Um, but for some reason, I got hung up on the trig and I did the trig first and the analytical today. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, just in case anybody was wondering why uh, we weren't doing exactly what it said on um, the plan. Okay, so what I wanted to do today with you was just to go over some of the concepts from grade 11 analytical geometry. This is because you are going to get a question in your trials paper and in your finals paper after the stats question that's going to be on grade 11 analytical geometry and this really is one of the places where you should get all your marks so I just wanted to go over some of the basics and then what I'm going to do in another lesson with you is then go and have a look at a typical exam type question where we would apply all of these things Okay, and then normally what they do is they have some kind of difficult problem solving question at the end. And we can certainly have a look at some of those as well. I don't think that'll be this lesson. It'll be another lesson that I do with you. Um, let's get started. Okay, sorry, I can just see here. Um, Shelter. Hi, everyone. I am new. Can you assist me? Okay, so first of all, big warm welcome to you. It's really nice to have you here with us at Watobi. Um, I'm the teacher. My name is Lee. Yulenda is my super amazing, awesome TA. She's the one that helps you guys as well and gives you lots of support and encouragement. Please make sure that you have a book and a pen and a calculator, and we just encourage you to get involved in the lessons share your answers, work through the questions, um, and then just participate in a positive way. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to show you how to calculate the distance of a line or the midpoint or gradient or anything like that, because those are things that are very basic. We know how to do that. What I want to focus on is working backwards, because often this is where we, we end up getting a little bit uh, tripped up. Okay. First question is they want you to calculate the values of K. If the length of a line segment joining the points A, 2 and minus 3 and B, K and 5 is root 80. Okay, are you guys okay to do that on your own? You should be. What are the values of K? And when you are done, as always, say done in the chat. Or if you want to DM some answers, just not to put off anybody, you can DM me or you lend her with your answers for K. All right, off you go. You should be able to do this in about four minutes. I'm timing you.
remember to put it on the chart when you are yeah, done. When you're done, done. absolutely. Thanks, Shilinda. Is it Nonela? You're welcome to unmute and speak. Are you stuck? No, the hand's gone. We got values for K, guys. Done, Lesejo, good. Camachelo, all right, good job. Mercedes done as well. Okay. Nonella is also done. Okay, I'm going to wait for one more person. And then you guys are going to share your answers with us. Okay, Sharik. Okay, Sharik, are you prepared to share your answers with us? You can just put them into the chat, Sharik, if you don't want to unmute. Or if you want to unmute and speak, that's cool. What did you get as your values for K? Okay, Sharik got eight. Okay, I did not get eighteen. Camuchelo, I agree. That's what I got as well. That's it, Lucidi. Okay, so either K was minus two, or K was equal to six. Okay, so you would have subbed into the distance formula. And then that would have been five plus three. And you would have had to square both sides, right? So you would have ended up with 80 equals K squared minus four K plus four plus 64, you would have got it into standard form. And then this would have been minus 12 factorized. And that's how you would have ended up with those two solutions. Okay, good job. Moving on. Let's now work backwards with midpoint. Okay, so again, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm going to let you guys do this yourselves. You're going to calculate the X coordinate at D and the Y coordinate at E if you've been given that the midpoint of line ED is 1 and minus 2. Please remember to stay on mute unless, of course, you want to ask a question. Okay, off you go, guys. You should be able to do this in about three minutes. I'm timing you.
Okay, so again, when you're done, you can say done in the chat. Good, 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 good. Okay, so Seth's done, Pinga's done, Natalie's done, Tondo's done, Sakhofatso's done, Trisha's done. Nice. Trish, are you happy to share your answers? I know you always try to talk. You can just pop them into the chat. What did you get, Trish? What did you get for X and what did you get for Y? Good. Kamachelo, Nonela. Trish, are you feeling shy? You don't want to share your answers? Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry, Trish. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Quite right. X is minus one and Y is one. Yes, good. Well done. Good job, everybody. Okay, so just very quickly, you would have said X plus three over two equals one. You would have cross multiplied and that's how you would have got negative one and then as far as the y is concerned you would have said y plus negative five over two would have been equal to negative two so that would have been negative four added five to both sides and that's where you got the one from cool beans all right let's move on now we're talking about gradient. Calculate the value of k in each case f, right? In uh, the first case, AB is parallel to CD. In the second case, AB is perpendicular to CD. Okay, off you go. You might need a little bit more time. I'm going to give you six minutes to do question A and B. Again, when you're done, you're going to say you're done in the chat, please.
Okay, let's see. Okay. Cool, Natalie's done, Chloe's done. Pinga, thank you for sending me your answers. Pinga, I got the same answer for A, but I got a different answer for B. Okay, so Chloe, Natalie, Tamalia, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Please DM me your answers so I can see what you got. So Pinga, I agree with A, but for B, I got a different answer. Okay, Chloe, I agree with you. Yes, good, well done. I got the same for both of mine. Good job. So Pinga, just go back and look at B and just see if you've made a mistake somewhere. Maybe transposing or a multiplying mistake or something. Natalie, DM us your answers. Let's see what you got. Good, Panache. Yes, that's the right answer for A. Good job. Bayolisi, I hope I... Oh, you just DM'd them. Cool. That's it. Well done. Bail. That's cool. Nonela, you're done as well. All right. So good, everybody. So for A, you should have had K was equal to 34. That's correct. And for B, you should have had K was equal to negative three. Okay. Zunaka. Can I do question B? I think A is A all right. I can just do question B. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you're happy with that. Katleho. Um, can you please do like the gradient of question A, if that's okay? Sure, we'll do, okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, let's just do both of them quickly. So those of you that have got it correct, just be patient, please. Okay, so when it comes to um, question A, the gradient of line AB is the same as the gradient of line CD, right? Because the lines are parallel to one another. So the gradient of AB is our change in Y, so minus 5 minus 1 over our change in X. So that will be K plus 2 to the gradient of CD. So change in Y, let's say 7 minus 6 over change in x minus 2 minus 4. Okay, so we'd end up with negative 6 over k plus 2 is equal to 1 over negative 6. Cross multiply. Let's just move that down. Cross multiply. So negative 6 times negative 6 would be positive 36. And k plus 2 times 1 would be k plus 2. Okay, so leaving the k on the side, transposing the 2 is how we would end up with the 34. Okay. The other one, you can either do it in two parts or you can do it all together. Right, so I'm going to do it all together. As far as this is concerned, the gradient of AB 
times the gradient of CD equals negative one. When lines are perpendicular, the product of their gradients is always negative one. So the gradient of AB, all right, is change in Y. So that's minus five minus one over K plus two times the gradient of CD we know is seven minus six over minus two minus four. And this is equal to negative one. Okay, so now we've got negative six over K plus two equals one over negative, sorry, beg your pardon, not equals, multiplied by equals negative one. We are multiplying fractions on the left. So negative six times one, we're multiplying our numerators and we're multiplying our denominators. So that gives us minus 6K minus 12, and that's equal to negative one over one. Again, I'm going to cross multiply. Let's just move this down, get it out the way. So one times negative six is negative six, and negative 6K minus 12 times negative one, will leave me with 6K plus 12. Transpose the 12, that's gonna give me negative 18 on the left. Divide both sides by six, and that's why K will be equal to negative three. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> any questions, Matrix, is that all good? All happy? Okay, I'm going to move on then. I presume you'll take screenshots if you need to. Okay, so let's talk about the angle of inclination. All right, so let's go straight to this question over here. All right, when they ask you to calculate the angle of inclination, either your gradient, so we use the formula, first of all, let's just write that down. So we use the formula tan theta equals m, okay, m being gradient. So either your gradient can be positive or your gradient can be negative. If your gradient is positive, then your angle of inclination is going to be acute. Okay, so in other words, smaller than 90. If your angle, sorry, if your gradient is negative, then your angle of inclination is going to be obtuse. Okay, so you just got to be careful about that. Um, often what they do is they ask us to work with angle of inclination in order to calculate an angle between two lines, right? So in this case, if I wanted to calculate the size of alpha, how would I do it? What would, what would I need to do, do you think? If someone can unmute and talk to me and tell me, that would be really cool. How would we work out alpha? Let's go, guys. There we go, Nonela. Okay, Nonela, go for it. What would you do? Uh, I will use my coordinate C and A to calculate my gradient. Then uh -huh. the formula tan theta is equal to my gradient. Uh -huh. Then I calculate okay. that angle. Absolutely, and that would allow you to calculate the size of theta. All right, so lovely. Step number one, you guys need to calculate the size of theta. Step number two, you'd also need to calculate the size of beta. Step number three, you're going to calculate alpha. 
alpha is going to be equal to beta minus theta. Why? Why is alpha equal to beta minus theta? Bio? <clears throat> Exterior angle of a triangle is equal to yeah. two opposite interior angles. It certainly is. Well done. Beautiful. So exterior angle of triangle is the reason. Okay, nice, good. Okay, go for it, guys. I'm going to give you four minutes. Work out the size of alpha. Good, Pinga, well done, perfect, 100%. Mm, you did that super fast, Pinga, that's great. So, Pinga, I'm just going to bring this up here. I know the rest of us are still busy. Don't be stressed out, guys. Pinga, if you want something to keep you busy in the meantime, there's a question for you here in the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, just while the others are still busy working. Okay. Panache, that's fine. Not a problem. Okay, so let's <clears throat> talk about how we would do this. So I'm just going to move that down there. Okay. All right, Panache, let's talk about how we would do this. I'm just clearing some space. Guys, you don't have to listen to me. Do your own thing. If you are finished, that's fine. Bio, you can DM me your answer. If it's correct, you're welcome to carry on with a question in the bottom right-hand corner as well, while I just help Panash, who's struggling a little bit with this question. Okay, so Panash, tan theta will be equal to the gradient of line AC. So the gradient of line AC change in Y, so three plus two over, two plus five. Okay, so that means the tan theta is equal to five over seven. So theta is an acute angle. On your calculator, you're gonna go shift tan and you're gonna put in your five over seven. And you should be getting that theta is equal to 35 comma 54 degrees round correctly to two decimal places. 
Now we're going to work out the size of beta. Same formula. Yes, Mosey, good, well done, lovely. You can carry on with the question in the bottom right-hand corner as well. Lovely. Tan beta is going to be equal to the gradient of line BD. Okay. Lisejo got a slightly different answer to you, but I'm going to do the correction now. Bio, I th think you've just left off a number in your answer. Okay. <clears throat> so tan B, the gradient of line BD is going to be change in Y. So 4 plus 3 over minus 1, minus 6. So this is equal to 7 over negative 7. So that would be negative 1. So that means that beta is going to be equal to or your PAA or your reference angle would be 45 degrees. So beta is going to be 180 minus 45, which gives you 135 degrees. Good, Seth. Yes, well done. Okay, and then the last part to this problem. Okay, theta plus alpha equals beta because of exterior angle of triangle. So we've got 35, 54 plus alpha is equal to beta, which is 135. So that means that alpha is going to be equal to 99, comma, let's just, comma, 46. There we go. Good, Penga, well done. Okay, nice job, Penga. All right. Okay, so Panache, uh, for 10B, I didn't get why it is 45 degrees. Okay, because um, your gradient is negative. Beta cannot be uh, it, it cannot be an acute angle. All right. So the tan of forty five is one. So if you go shift tan and you put in one, it's going to give you forty five degrees. You then have to subtract that from one hundred and eighty. Okay. So it's this bit over here, Panache. This bit over here, that's 45 degrees. Okay, you are then subtracting that from 180 in order to get what B is. Okay. All right. Okie dokes. So again, just some revision of the basics. Let's carry on now. Okay, everybody happy with that? If you're gonna take any screenshots, do so. And I'm moving on. All good. Oh, shame, Jimmy. Please give me to the other question. Okay, I tell you what, let's do this one for homework. Okay, you guys take a screenshot, try this question because it's an identical question, really. You do this one for homework, and then we'll go through the answer to this the next time I see you. Okay, and try it on your own. You happy with that? Okay, so this one on the right.
Okay. So let's go down to the equation of a straight line. Okay, so that would be in the form y equals mx plus c. So again, I'm going to try and let you guys do this by yourselves without interfering. Remember, m is the gradient, c is the y-intercept, x and y represent any x and y coordinates of points that lie on the line. Okay, so in A, they want you to determine the equation of a line parallel to the line 3y minus 2x equals 6, and it passes through the point 9 and minus 1. And in the second part, they want you to determine the equation of the line perpendicular to the line y equals 1 over 2x plus 1, and it passes through the point of minus 6 and 2. Okay. Again, as I said, you guys are going to do this by yourselves. You're going to DM me your answers, and you're going to say done when you're done. Okay, off you go. Okay, Panache. That's looking good. Finger, I got the same answer for A, but my C value for B was different to yours. I think you just made a little transposing error or something like that. Do you want to uh, DM me your answers? Nonela, you can DM me your answers too. Yeah, we go, Pinga. 
<laughs> Perfect. Okay, Seth, I've got a different C value. Ooh, and your gradient is different. Okay, so Seth, let's just do this together. I think it's just a little mistake you've made. So you've got 3y equals, yes, it's so perfect. So you've got 3y equals, and then you would have taken the 2x over to the right-hand side, Seth. So it would be plus 2x on the right, plus 6. And you would have divided through by 3, and you would have ended up with the gradient being 2 over 3 plus 2, isn't it? Yes, Katleho, good. Perfect. So perfect. Okay, so now your parallel line has the same gradient, but a different y intercept. Nonela, lovely. Panache, perfect. Your answers are fantastic. Okay, so now you would sub in nine and negative one. So negative one equals two over three times by nine plus C. And that means that C, yes, bio, perfect, both answers. C would be equal to negative seven, Seth. Where am I? C would be equal to negative seven. Okay, whoopsie daisy. Let's just move those down. So here you would have had y equals 2 over 3x minus 7. Yes, Nonella, lovely. Okay, and then in part B, all of you that have submitted answers to me have got that perfectly correct. Okay, so just quickly for those of you that haven't finished it, the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines always equals negative 1. So the gradient of your perpendicular is going to be negative 2. It passes through this point. So y equals minus 2x plus c. You're going to sub in minus 6 and 2. And this would be positive 12. Take it over to the other side, it would be negative 12. So 2 minus 12 would leave us with the negative 10. Okay, good stuff, everybody. Well done. All right, so if you need to take screenshots, let's go down. And let's have a look at this question over here. All right, so it says, <clears throat> consider the lines AB and FG with equations. So the equation of FG is 4Y plus 5X equals 3. They want us to determine the equation of line AB. They want us to determine the coordinates of P. And they want us to show that line FG is perpendicular to line AB and that it bisects. A, B. All right. I would like you guys to do um, A and B, and we'll do C together. Unless, of course, you think you can do C by yourself, but let's do A and B. All right. So, again, I'm leaving you to do this by yourselves. DM me your answers for A and B when you've got them. Oh, sorry, Homozo. Just one second, guys. I'm just going up here. There you go, Homozo. Screenshots.
screenshot. Sorted. Pleasure, Komotso. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to our question. Network is is acting up, right? I'm sure it's not on your side because you're lagging on my side, but I'm sure it's my Am network because I? I haven't seen you complaining. No, yeah. it's network. Yeah, it's How just irritating. Irritating. <laughs> Good. Okay, Lydon. I hope I've said that correctly. You've done A and B. Please DM me your answers, Lydon. Sinanlantla, I agree. I've got the same answer for question A. Good job. Let's see, Leiden, I agree. Yes, lovely. Tando, good job. I agree, I got the same answer. Okay, so Leiden, I agree with you, good. Mm, bio, I got the same answer for A, but I got a different answer for B. Panash, I did not get that for A. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, Pinga, me too. I got the same answers. Lovely, well done. Um, Menentle, yes. Just be careful with B. Did you maybe leave a negative off? Because if you if you look at point P, it's in the second quadrant, so it can't have. <laughs> Here we go. That's right, Tando. Good. Yes, Seth. Lovely. Sinentlantla. Good. Well done. Mm. We're going to do some nice, difficult questions the next time I see you guys. Yes, Sharik. Lovely. Good job. Nice, guys. Your basics are really good. It's very positive to see this. We're going to smash that question three. Yes, Seth, lovely, well done. Okay, good job, everybody. Really nice. Okay, so a lot of you or most of you have got this correct. For A, you are getting four over five, X plus 14 over five which is really nice, yes. Mozi, something went wrong when you worked out the coordinates of P, but your answer for A is correct. So for B, your coordinates for P, you should have minus one and two. All right, shall I show how I got the answer for P, the coordinates for P? I think everybody's all right with A, part A. Yes, okay, all right, so just very quickly, it's a point of intersection, all right? So we've got the um, equation of line FG, we know, so this is part B, that that was equal to 4y plus 5x equals 3. So this is what I did, okay? I know what y is equal to, so I just subbed in. Okay, so I took this and I subbed it in there. Okay, so 4 over 5x plus 14 over 5 plus 5x is equal to 3. So we're basically doing a simultaneous solution. Okay, if you wanted to, you could make y the subject of the formula for line fg and then equate your y's, but I don't even think I would bother with that. I would just sub in. So this would give us 16 over 5x plus 56 over five, getting rid of our brackets, plus five X equals three, multiply through by five. This gives us 16 X plus 56 plus 25 X um, equals 15. So this gives us 41 X on the left, 15 minus 56 gives us negative 41 on the right. So X would be equal to negative one. Okay, when you solve for y, go back and use this equation over here, just because it's easier. So y equals 4 over 5 into negative 1 plus 14 over 5. And that's where we got the 2 from. So the coordinates of p, negative 1 and 2. Okay, all right, let's go back and have a look at show that line FG is perpendicular to line AB. All right, yes, Leiden, 100%. You certainly can do. Okay, when they are saying things like show. As this time is not my network, right? I think to leave froze. 
because I can definitely see Leiden. Okay, so she did frizz. Okay, so while we wait for her, um, C is basically saying show that line FD is perpendicular to line AB and bisect line AB. Is there anyone who would like to show us some direction on how you can actually answer the question? See, and the question disappeared. Um, at least it's the end of the day, guys. I don't know if you guys took a screenshot so we can quickly finish that, but um, not if you didn't write it down or you didn't take a screenshot, it's okay, just do the poll. I'm sure when we start on Thursday, Teacher Lee can go through that part first um, before going through anything else. And she's back to finish it. Yay. She's here. We were busy reading the question, Teacher Lee. You are muted. Yeah. No problem. Sorry, guys. I don't know how I got booted out of here. Uh, you froze. <laughs> so, so. Sorry, guys. You froze <clears throat> and then suddenly you're out. Yeah. <laughs> Bad. okay <clears throat> i'm back all right so let's just quickly finish this and then um we'll call it a day all right it is very important that you do not start this this thing by writing the gradient of fg times the gradient of ab equals negative one you cannot write that that is what you are proving okay so you're not allowed to write it first if you write it first they're going to penalize you okay so when it comes to line fg we're going to rearrange it. It's 4y plus 5x equals 3. Let's just rearrange that. So 4y equals negative 5x plus 3 divided through by 4. y equals negative 5 over 4x plus 3 over 4. Then you will do this. You will say 4 over 5 times negative 5 over 4 equals negative 1. Therefore, the gradient of AB times the gradient of FG equals negative 1. So you write it at the end because it is what you are proving. You cannot write that first. Therefore, AB is perpendicular to FG. So the setting out of this is very, very important. Okay. And then if they want us to show that it bisects, we could use um, midpoint. Um, I suppose the other thing that we could do is we could calculate with distance formula, we could calculate the length of AP because we know what the coordinates of P are and we could calculate the length of PB. It would be the same and then we could conclude that P is the midpoint. Okay, but we've run out of time. <laughs>